All right, we are live. So welcome back to DAP University. So today we have a lot to talk about in our live stream. Uh, I'm going to talk about a big opportunity for Web 3.0 developers today. This is a $500,000 opportunity, okay, uh, and what you need to understand about this. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at a lot of other updates that have happened in this space since our live stream yesterday. Again, we do these live streams Monday through Friday on this channel. Just subscribe, turn on notifications down below. You're going to find out about those whenever you go live. We're going to check out the crypto markets, answer some of your questions, and a whole lot more. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, then definitely head on over to uh, dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. And in case you've missed my announcement, we are launching the blockchain bootcamp version 2.0, you know, this Thursday. All right, that's just a few short days on July 14th. So make sure you sign up the link down below to hold your spot today. All right, so we got people jumping in the chat here. We've got Above Realty, Charles, uh, Robert. Let's see here, Automatic Beats. Um... Chicken McNuggets, or <laughs> Chicken Nuggets, uh, Mark, let's see here, Tebo, uh, Viresh, Third Worlds, nice, awesome, Jay, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this big opportunity for blockchain developers. So, um, you know, I've talked a lot on my channel about how hackathons can be a huge thing for blockchain developers, people who are, you know, especially trying to get into the space because they're so, they, they can often be such big opportunities, especially if you're trying to land your first job, or if you're already a developer, they're also a great way to get some opportunity. So, uh, you know, of course, what are hackathons, in case you're not familiar, you know, it's basically this big event where you show up and you're building something uh, with specific technology with some sort of end goal in mind. And then you, you know, get together with other people and you build this stuff, you know, maybe it's virtual, maybe it's in person over a period of several days. And then you present your project to a panel of judges and then they, you know, talk about like, hey, uh, you know, we let, we're going to pick these top winners uh, from this hackathon and we're going to give them prizes. Okay. There's usually like talks and stuff that you can, that you can, uh, you know, join in. And so hackathons are a great way for developers to get involved because you can get big prizes. You can also network with other people uh, who can help you get jobs. And you can also, you know, get in front of other people that might want to hire you. So uh, I, I was just alerted of uh, a hackathon that's happening pretty soon that has $500,000 prize pool for Web 3.0 developers to build on top of Luxo. Okay. So, you know, full disclosure, uh, they I, I was reached out to about this from a community member. This is not a, this is not a sp paid sponsorship or anything like this, but this did come on my radar uh, from someone from the community. And I wanted to present this in front of you all because you know, for lots of reasons. Number one, you know, there's a big there's a big prize pool here. Um, number two is you can use the exact skills that I teach you on this channel to participate in something like this. So if you've been going through those you know, those free tutorials, maybe you've gone through the blockchain bootcamp uh, or the blockchain mastery program. Uh, the skills that you have, you know, knowing Solidity and understanding how to program in JavaScript will prepare you for this particular opportunity. Okay, so it's going to happen pretty soon. All right, it's going to begin on. Uh, Let's see here, July 20th through August 31st. There can be a total prize pool of $500,000 paid out in LYXC. That is the native token for Luxo blockchain. But let's look at the different categories here. So first of all, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, what is Luxo? So it is a blockchain, uh, you know, in and of itself, uh, that basically was started by uh, Fabian. I always mispronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try to say it right now on camera. My apologies. But anyways, he's the creator of the ERC-20 standard, creator of Web3.js. I was a big, uh, you know, early player in the Ethereum ecosystem. Okay, so that's that's basically who who you know started this. Um, and anyways, they have their their hackathon is really based on one of the core missions, which is like digital identity. Okay, so they have a universal profiles tool. Okay, so they have a big uh, $200,000 prize pool for people who are building with universal profiles. Okay, so you can read more about this on their website and how that works. Uh, social and DAOs. Okay, so if you want to build a project with social or DAOs, you can win, uh, you know, $200,000 prize pool here. Here's different bounties. So if you build a chat app, a social media feed, uh, DAO key management for, uh, for up based and down interface, open category, and then fashion art, music and entertainment, okay? And then also multiverse and gaming. Uh, also Blue Sky, forgot to mention that one too. So you can register here. Um, you can kind of go through the prizes and see if there's a project that you you know would like to build. You could definitely take some influence from some of the tutorials we've done on our channel, or maybe inside of the Staff University programs. If you've done those as influence for your hackathon project, you probably have a pretty good starting point uh, for those 
types of things. So definitely check this out, you know, and like I said before, like hackathons are huge, especially if you're just getting started in the industry because they have a multiple, there's multiple uh, uh, ups, you know, there's different ways that you can get upside from a hackathon. So let's say that you entered and you don't like win some massive prize, like that's okay. You know, there's still lots of opportunities that you can get out of a hackathon. You might meet other people who could help you, uh, you know, get a job. You could help them get a job. All right. I've got a video on my channel about how to, you know, uh, make the most out of a hackathon. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already. But uh, also just presenting in front of other people who are in the industry is a great way to get, you know, your name out there and show people what you can do. Um, so and this is def definitely big. So go check this out if you're looking for an opportunity uh, starting next week uh, for the Luxo Hackathon. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Is, is that something that you're interested in? So I got some good questions here in the chat. We'll come back to those here in a minute. But uh, yeah, so definitely go check out this hackathon. Um, let's look at a couple other things that have popped up in the space since yesterday. Uh, let me just pull this up here. So we did see, let's see here. We did see some drama about uh, Uniswap liquidity pool yesterday and an exploit. There were some rumors floating around <laughs> for a while that Uniswap itself had been exploited. Okay, uh, that was definitely not true. Um, people were worried that the protocol itself was hacked and people had taken a lot of money. But what happened basically was uh, Uniswap liquidity pool was hit with a phishing attack totaling $3.5 million worth of Ether. So basically, the phishing attack was part of a much water hack and is not considered an exploit okay uh from uniswap users and also uniswap founder so basically um what happened was a hacker or a group of hackers executing a phishing campaign on a major uniswap version 3 liquidity pool was made off uh made off with nft, NFT positions worth uh roughly 3278 ether or 3.56 million so it detected it was detected yesterday um and then we also saw Binance <laughs> Threat Intelligence Department talk about this. Um, and that's why we kind of had the rumor that Uniswap itself had been exploited. That definitely was not true. Um, so if you saw that floating around, that's that's not what happened. Uh, so anyways, these the basically what happened was um, you, you know, had a situation where you, you know what a phishing campaign is. Basically, it's where you try to pretend to be somebody else, or you, you basically like you you are uh, trying to get sensitive information from somebody else by posing as something else. Okay, so you see this all the time. Like, um, you know, phishing attempt might be like an email that you get that says like, "Hey, you know, come you know, swap <laughs> your NFT for." uh or whatever right like they they, they, they they usually they usually get you one or two ways they either kind of get you with some sort of like appeal to greed or some appeal to fear where they say like you know come by our you know something like we'll, 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 we'll give you money for your token or something like that and then you sign a message and then you sign the wrong message and like you you're actually signing an approval message that gets all your nfts wiped out of your wallet or they'll hit you with a fear message of like, you know, your account's been compromised, like, you know, restore your wallet here, and then you put in your seed phrase, and then they take all your crypto. That's basically like phishing. It's trying to get uh, private information from you. So you can see that's kind of what happened here. So the website hosted by the bad actors sent an ETH call on the document click. <laughs> okay. Uh, the contents, let's just see here. Uh, the contents of this function is uh, obfuscated, which basically means it's hidden. However, the class, or sorry, how we can assimilate that it does two things. It can send your address and browser client info, okay, and then attempt to steal assets. So basically, you know, looks like a looks like a Uniswap page, but it's not. And that's what I was talking about before, where it's a phishing attempt. Basically, you know, that they, that's a great example. Like here's here's an airdrop. I was trying to find a good example earlier, like sort of appealing to the greed. Uh, my brain's a little foggy today, so I have a hard time coming up with one off the cuff. But that's a really good example. Like, here, claim your airdrop, right? That's basically what happened. Uh, re or reward claim. 
So it's like, yeah, we're going to give you money, click this button to claim it, but you're actually signing an approval transaction and then boom, like your, your funds get, get stolen. So, um, anyways, that's what happened and it did compromise some funds, but it was not a Uniswap exploit, uh, so if, if you saw that floating around on social media, Uniswap is definitely safe. Uh, nothing major to see here. That being said, uh, you know, we do have talked a lot on this channel about how to stay safe in the crypto space. Always know what you're signing. Okay, it's a good way, good way to protect yourself. Somebody says, yeah, it's funny. I get those kinds of emails all the time, but just ignore. Yeah, with you 100%, the best strategy is to ignore. Uh, the, the thing about thinking about phishing and like exploits and all that stuff is really, really, really like phishing emails. You know, one of the reasons they're so effective, like one of the reasons people keep doing them is because they work. <laughs> you know, you might have to send out, uh, I mean, I don't know these statistics from experience, <laughs> obviously, but I'm guessing it's just like everything else. Like I'm just kind of guessing that, you obviously they work, uh, so but they, they wouldn't keep doing them. So, you know, you might have to send out, you know, ten thousand, a hundred thousand phishing emails before you can get one, right? But if you're able to, you know, get that kind of traffic in mass, and that one is worth your time, then <laughs> if you're a bad person, then that's what they're gonna do. You know what I mean? So it's just like everything else. It's, it's sort of like if when if you see ads floating around online you probably ignore most of them and you're like, who, who is ever going to click on this crazy ad? But there's a reason people pay to show them it's because they work. All right. They're getting some sort of ROI off them. Of course, there's a lot of people out there who are, who are not profitable with ads. I get that. Right. Like there's some people who just spend money in advertising for like write-offs or, you know, <laughs> there could be other, other, uh, other reasons. Right. But generally, generally speaking, there are lots of people who are profitable with advertising. That's why they do it. Um, same same type of reason for these phishing campaigns and stuff like that. So, but says, is this a bug bounty? So, um, the opportunity that we're talking about here, just a quick recap. Uh, you can never go check out the live stream replay if you want to, but it's the Luxo Hackathon. Okay, so five hundred thousand dollars in prizes. Uh, we can see the different breakdowns here. If you know the skills we teach you on this channel, uh, like Solidity, JavaScript, uh, how to develop with Web three JS, uh, then you're going to be well prepared to enter this particular hackathon. So definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the live chat replay here. So how do people avoid phishing attacks? You definitely always want to know what you're signing and be watching, you know, the page and always be skeptical at pretty much every anytime you sign a transaction. There's, I mean, that's that's the easy, that's like the simple, like first line of defense. Of course, it can get more uh, complex beyond that, but that's a good rule of thumb to start off with. So um, we also see. We also see um, the official announcement for the GameStop uh, NFT marketplace. So we've, we've talked about this uh, for a while now, okay? But it's actually it's actually going live. So let me just pull this up on my screen here. So GameStop announced yesterday that the long-awaited debut of its online marketplace for nfts is now live so um the platform is now open to the public for beta testing so i haven't used it yet let's actually just click through and take a look to see what they've created here okay this actually looks pretty nice so power to the players So they they have a partnership with Immutable X coming soon with Gods Unchained, Illuvium. All right, so they're already tapping into uh, some pretty well established like NFT games and crypto games. So they definitely get the ecosystem. Uh, so low fee, high speed. Okay, uh, true ownership, uh, secured by Ethereum mainnet, Loopring layer two. Okay, and then also easy to use. Well, awesome. 
So let's look at some other details here. Uh, you can go check that out at nft.gamestop.com. So they recently launched their GameStop wallet. Okay, so that's in tandem with this. Which the company said in a press release, uh, they'll be able to buy, sell, and trade NFTs or virtual goods. Over time, the marketplace will expand to offer other features such as Web3 gaming. So yeah, I definitely see GameStop getting themselves into a position for uh, Web 3.0 gaming. Of course, it's GameStop. That's their industry. Um, so you know, I definitely think Web 3 gaming is 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 one sector that is relatively we're just scratching the surface on the potential for what you can do with Web 3.0 games. You know, it's it's really hard to make a a fun game from scratch. Um, so I yeah, I really think the I, I think the best. Uh, so some of the early players in the space most likely are going to be established games who migrate into the web 3.0 space um that's how i could see things playing out of course it's really hard to tell uh exactly what's going to happen but th that's a huge advantage if you already have an addictive game people like but then again you have to talk about what what's the incentive right if you already have something that's working really well um what's the incentive to go crypto you know, it's it's a risk. It's a it may not be the best risk reward scenario for other people if uh, if you don't want to mess up some, something that's that's going well in the first place. But there's probably the right uh, profile out there for somebody to take that risk. Um, and I think the easiest way is to just start offering low hanging fruit uh, in the game with NFTs. So you know, it's like say you have in game assets, and you know, you just better start a pilot project to take those assets out of the game before you just like. <laughs> you know, convert your entire game to blockchain. So, the, the, but the other, you know, school of thought here is that, you know, somebody who is crypto native is going to emerge and uh, rise up and gain that traction and uh, become a key player. That's also a possibility. It just takes a long time to build a really good addictive game uh, because the user experience is such a, is such a challenging part to nail. You know, you can build a DeFi app uh, you know, you could fork a you could fork a DeFi protocol and just change some settings, okay, uh, with relatively low effort on the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's not like it's not like stupid easy, but it's like compared to making a, a, a new game from scratch, it's pretty easy, okay. So that that's one of the reasons you saw like you know DeFi absolutely explode in the last major bull run was because you really only had like three or four original DeFi apps, <laughs> okay. Uh, you basically, or three, th maybe like three or four, you know, really original ideas. Uh, you had savings and lending apps, okay, that had big use cases. You had, um, you know, trading, like a DEX, okay, um, you know, any of the tokens, right, that had, you know, he basically had liquid, anything that had a liquidity pool where you could do farming, okay, like, like all that stuff is pretty easy to just like fork it create a new interface, change some settings, and then get a bunch of users by like trying to offer them an airdrop or like a pump and dump token. Uh, and I'm saying that kind of sarcastically, but that's what a lot of people did. All right. Um, but, you know, it's it's a much harder to create a game. It's much harder to just like fork a game that's going to that's gonna be actually useful. Now you could fork a game that, you know, has the same sort of like pump and dump economics behind it. It doesn't have to be that fun. But when you're talking about something that actually... Uh, has long-lasting staying power. Uh, it's it's a little more challenging. So, so um, but I didn't see this come out yesterday. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about in terms of you know good insight in these use cases, and also a new blockchain that I'm, I'm going to do some more research on uh, that people have a lot of eye a lot of uh, eyeballs on. Uh, as a potential, another potential alt L1 to hit the space. No token yet. So, you know, this could be the beginning of another, uh, the seeds for a frothy run of competitors. Okay, we'll talk about that here in a second. Of course, we saw things like Solana come out, the last bull. Uh, so we'll talk about talk about that here if you stick around at the end of the video. So anyways, uh, he you know, this, he's talking about the use cases, right? I was talking a minute ago about... I was only like three, maybe like three or four original ideas in DeFi that actually had any kind of traction. Um, and then how games are, you know, challenging. So here, I thought this was a pretty good taste from Ryan over Masari. Um, so good rule of thumb for crypto. If it's feasible, legitimate, and it works for a narrow user base first, it's going to work at scale eventually. Okay, so examples are like collateralized lending, uh, which I talked about before, like savings and lending apps, uh, a DEX, okay, 
uh, NFTs, decentralized compute, etc. cetera. Uh, counter examples, <laughs> okay. Unsecured lending, algorithmic stable coins, <laughs> right? Like we have not seen an algorithmic stable coin really work for very long before it just blows up in people's faces. Of course, you all a Terra Luna disaster. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't think we've permanently learned our lesson from that type of thing. I think that people's, you know, human nature is going to repeat itself and we're going to see more experiments with algorithmic stable coins in the future. Uh, I, of course, will not be participating in those <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, I would caution you against doing the same. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good thing. It's it's sort of like the idea of nail it and scale it when you're in the tech world uh, and you're creating any kind of product is if you can get it working for a small number of users who are, you know, die hard and can't live without it, then it's probably going to scale eventually, assuming that the other sort of kinks in the in the tech get worked out with blockchain, which, of course, I think they can do over a long time frame. Okay, so um, another thing that I want to talk about that I saw floating around yesterday, I I've seen people talk about this some, uh, haven't paid as much attention to it yet. So this is literally just just coming on my radar, so I'm not super educated about it, but I, I think I am going to do a little more research on this and make a dedicated video, so subscribe to the channel. You know, people are talking all the time about, like, hey, what are the next sort of like tech trends that um, you know, can fuel you know, the fire for uh, a next wave of adoption for crypto? Um, there's a lot of people who think that sort of the, the alternative layer one blockchain, alternative layer one smart contract platform um, sort of movement is long from dead. Of course, we saw this, you know, the last, you know, major crypto bull run with platforms like Solana, uh, you know, Avalanche, all that type of stuff coming out as ETH killers. And it uh, looks like we have another one hitting the scene. Okay, so I don't even know how you pronounce this. I'll have to look it up before I make an official video, but it's uh, Sui. I guess Sui. I don't know, Sui. If there's somebody who knows how to pronounce it, let me know down in the, in the live chat below. But uh, it has no token yet. <laughs> okay, let's look at let's look at some of the details here. Again, we'll, we'll make a better dedicated video about this. So definitely subscribe, turn on notifications. You'll find about that whenever we publish that video. But uh, So what do we know about it? So it... Tech tokenomics the team, so the tech building and extending on years of research at Meta. Okay, so you know, previously company Facebook, uh, Sui is different from any blockchain we've seen. To start, the blockchain is extremely high performance. Uh, early results in running Sui on a MacBook Pro were able to process over 120,000 token transfers per second. So, I guess my question immediately is. What does it do when a lot of people are trying to use it <laughs> at the same time? Um, but what is that? How much does it cost when that happens? What happens to the infrastructure? So, anyways, uh, key to Sui's performance is transaction parallelization. Okay. In most blockchains, transactions must be ordered and placed into a block to be executed sequentially. I guess my question in return on that is uh, how do you? How do you actually settle state in real time if multiple people are trying to make transactions that modify the same value? That's what I want to know. You're probably going to get failed transactions. Sequential execution unnecessarily restricts throughput on these chains. Most transactions are independent. That's not totally true because usually when blockchains are like when you have net we have like peak network activity it's usually because people are trying to like get in on the same like nft mint or something so if you're trying to if you're trying to like do a mint on the same smart contract as somebody else like there's lots of people who are trying to do the same thing at the same time and a lot of them get failed transactions so uh anyways because sui requires that dependencies of transactions be explicitly stated it's able to process them in parallel the minority of use cases where transactions are intertwined so it allows them to be ordered executed sequentially Still by using two different paths to consensus, Byzantine consensus broadcast. Let's see here. Can be validated in parallel. So that's why I think it scales. Doesn't just have high throughput, but has low latency too. 
uses the move programming language. Okay, so this was the programming language invented uh, for Meta's original blockchain project in the first place. Okay, move is memory safe like Rust, more expressive than a smart contract languages. Tokenomics. So here's here's the big kicker. Uh, has a 10 billion supply to be distributed between the founding team investors of public sale and future emissions. Okay. Uh, it's used for staking, transaction fees, governance, and unit of account, medium of exchange. Uh, so the token does not exist yet. Okay. So it's interesting. You know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. Um, I do, have, of course, have questions about the blockchain design itself. Um, you know, there's definitely some questions here, but everybody's always looking for the next hot thing to chase and could be one of them. Of course, not financial advice. Let's see here. So Amazon to pay rate programmers, or pay, pay top rate for programmers was recently raised from 300K to almost 600K with benefits top tier. Yeah, I think Amazon's trying to get strong during uh, the time when some of their big players are weak. Yeah, that was that was the answer here. Does big companies like Amazon, Google, Meta, Apple hire blockchain developers? So it depends on the company. It depends on what their their role in the space is. Uh, you know, um, the answer is yes. Not necessarily every company. Well, pretty much every one of those companies has some sort of like crypto um, sector. Okay, now it's not going to be like their entire company is all blockchain developers. Excuse me, but the short answer is yes. So, question about Cosmos and Golang. Um, so, we actually thought about uh, we actually thought about uh, doing a, maybe a video on Cosmos to just kind of get dip our toes in that. Because I know we've had some demand for people asking about how do we do stuff in Cosmos. All right, everybody. That's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out. So, we'll bring them up blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You, of course, can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. I'd like you to be course, but they're totally free. And if you like those, you want to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can ship become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. And we are opening the blockchain bootcamp 2.0 this Thursday. So make sure you hold your spot with the uh, link down below. All right. So that's all I got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.